Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hey, I am Elder Hawk. This is Triple A Ministries, and we are glad to see you. Thank you for taking a little time uh, out of your day to hear another lesson in a series on spiritual warfare. We're just glad that you took a little time, and we'll try not to waste time, and, and uh, we'll try to uh, dig into the word and give you something that'll bring strength to your life. And certainly our mission is to bring glory and honor to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. God is our heavenly father. Jesus is the head of the church. He died to have that right and gave us the right that we might be adopted into the family of God by his blood that was shed on Calvary. But that wasn't the end of the story. Early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. Praise be to God. So uh, in case you don't know who we are, we, we are certainly a ministry and uh, it's triple A. We try to be all things to all men by all means. We do not compromise the gospel book 66, the word of God. Uh, but what we try to do is reach all kinds of people. And so our agenda is very clear. We are on a kingdom agenda. We are uh, trying to seek the kingdom of God. We're seeking that first and all of, and his righteousness, uh, according to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter six, verse 33, and all uh, things uh, shall come after that. But our priority is God's kingdom. Hallelujah. And, and how he wants things done. Praise be to God. So we're glad you joined us. We like to start in prayer. And I don't know how long this session is going to be. We try not to go too long by the grace of God. We don't want to quench the Holy Spirit. We certainly don't want to do that. But we also do not want to. Uh, and we you have to do both of these at the same time. Because the Lord does all things decently and in order. And so we don't want to abuse your time. And we want to, we thank you for being generous enough to take time to feed your spirit thus via the word of God. And so if you were to ask us, maybe you don't, you're not familiar with this ministry and you might say, hey, are you got Baptists or Methodists or what are you? We're none of those things, right? We, we, we believe uh, in the word of God. We believe that um, God is our father and he's, he's the first and the last. Hallelujah. We believe uh, that Jesus is God's only begotten son, full of grace and truth. We believe that the Holy Spirit is in the church right now, in the church world, and within every believer, uh, leading and guiding us to all truth. Uh, we believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. We believe that he's the chief cornerstone. He he is the foundation, and we have to be careful what we build on it. So uh, we, it's not a complex ministry. We don't try to be complex. We try to be simple. And uh, our job is to walk alongside other ministries, different denominations, different nationalities, uh, eth uh, ethnic groups. Doesn't really matter to us. Uh, brothers and sisters come in all colors and sizes and shapes and tongues and nations. That really doesn't interest us. Right. We love you regardless of what your color is or, or your background. None of that stuff in interest this ministry whatsoever. We're interested in your your eternal well-being and that you live in this life the way God intended. Uh, we believe in discipleship and being disciples and making disciples that make disciples. Praise be to God. And so we give honor. We give honor to uh, those that oversee this ministry at Corona um, and and uh, in Mount Juliet, our overseeing church there, uh, and we also give honor unto Bishop Sanders there, uh, and and uh, we submit ourselves to oversight that we might conduct ourselves uh, from a doctrine standpoint properly, that from a an ethical standpoint properly, uh, we believe in accountability, and uh, for whatever that's worth, that's what we do here at AAA Ministries. But our intention is to try to do something to help you along this journey. Now, obviously to preach the gospel uh, to whosoever will, let him come. 
And so we're grateful. We're going to start with prayer. I uh, also will give honor to my wife, Lisa. And I'm grateful for her and all of my family, my children, my grandchildren. I'm so grateful. The Lord has been good to us. And, and we have to stop for a moment and say thank you. Uh, and so we appreciate uh, all of those who who help this ministry uh, continue to thrive and, and to reach those that, that God intended. Uh, praise be to God. So we're going to jump right into prayer and try to be faithful to that. And then, you know, we'll go maybe a half hour or so. That's what we try to do uh, from, um, from the teaching aspect of this. Um, and then uh, let you get back about your day. But again, thank you. Pray for us that we will continue uh, to reach those that God intends for this ministry. Let's pray. Father, we thank you uh, for this opportunity to serve you, to magnify you, to instruct your people in righteousness. Lord, they, they won't be like children tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. But Lord, help us, Father God, to, to teach the uh, your unchanging word uh, and to uh, preach a life-changing gospel that'll make an everlasting impact on the lives of those that hear. Lord, help us to decrease and you to increase. Lord, help us not to have reputation, but Lord, we, we point people to you. We realize that we have no heaven. We have no hell. We have no salvation. Uh, Lord, uh, just help us to have love in our heart, one for another, that we might love like you loved. And Lord, we pray, continue to pray for Deacon Major Jackson, continue to strengthen him and his family. Lord, we continue to pray for the Tucker family and my friend Mitchell Tucker and his dad and mom and, and brother, just the entire family. Lord, you know. And Lord, we continue to pray for Brother TJ and his family. And Lord, you, you're doing great things, Lord. And Lord, we continue to hold faith and trust you. Lord, we continue to pray for the mothers at Corona and Mother Jones and uh, Mother Hill and all those that are going through. And Lord, pray for them. And Help them, Jesus. And we continue to pray for Sister Aura and Lord, her health. And we continue to pray for Sister for, for Sister Battle. We pray for Brother Larry Battle. And, and, and we, we heard you, Sister Battle. We, 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 we pray with you. And we pray for your husband. And we pray for his leg, that God will heal him and help him and strengthen you and help your family. And we continue to pray uh, for the Quarter family. Amen. And Lord, in the loss of Brother Larry, and we pray for you, Sister Larisha, and we pray for you, Brother Philip, and we pray for that entire family. Help them, and Sister Cynthia, and, and Lord, help that whole family and, and prop them up and be their strength in times like these, Lord. We pray, Father God, for, for that family. Lord, you've been good to them, and Lord, continue to go with them and help them. We continue to pray for the Brown family. And we continue to pray for uh, the Hughes family and Pastor Luke. And Lord, thank you that you let, got him back into the house today. And, and Lord, thank you that you, 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 Lord, you set him free from respirators and, and machines. And, and Lord, he's, he's still uh, blessing your name and declaring your testimonies. Lord, bless his wife and, and bless his son. And, and Lord, just take care of him in Jesus' name. And Lord, just help us as we navigate, Lord, through this session, Lord, to do your will. Lord, speak through us. Uh, Lord, it'll be all of you and none of us. And Lord, help us to have your heart for your people. Lord, that we might say those things, Lord, that'll never hurt, but will help and call somebody out of darkness into your marvelous light. And, and we might declare grace, uh, Lord, that, that, that salvation is not earned. Uh, Lord, it's by grace. Uh, Lord, you gave it, Lord, but, Lord through faith. Lord, it was paid for in full, Lord, by your sacrifice when you nailed it to the cross. And Lord, help us to declare those things. Uh, and Lord, that, that we won't boast. We have no room to boast. We can't earn it. No, no good works uh, uh, is going to be enough. And Lord, we thank you for that. But Lord, you paid the ultimate price that we might have the right to the tree of life. Hallelujah to your name. Lord, now help us, Lord, with your holy word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, somebody. Amen. Hey, we're going to jump right in. Again, uh, you're going to need something to take notes. You, I'm telling you, you're going to want to go back and think about these things. And so this is lesson 41 um, in a series on spiritual warfare. 
This is lesson is for April the 7th, 2024. Again, my name is Elder Hogg and this is Triple A Ministries. Um, our base, our foundation scripture in this series is found in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. It says this. Paul said to Timothy, this charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them might as war a good warfare. Listen, we're not going to go back, and you can go back 41 weeks ago, and you can see that we built on that particular passage. We're not going to do that. It was, in fact, it was over 41 weeks ago when we started this series. But that passage lays a good foundation that we're not only supposed to be on a military like campaign, but we're supposed to be on a good one. We're to have an impact. Now, we can't get beside ourselves because without Him, we could do nothing. But listen, with Christ in our life, Via his word, our life's supposed to mean something. It's supposed to have an impact. When God sends down his word, it does not go back void. But it accomplishes what he sent it to do. And he doesn't have to use us, but he does. We partner with him, not because we're arrogant, but because he asked us to do that. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. We're supposed to be about his business. That's the way he wants it done. But we can't take the credit because whatever we are is by the grace of God. But make no mistake about it. Humbleness does not negate effectiveness. In fact, it ensures it. By the grace of God. But, you know, it can be a mistake if you're not careful in the carnal mind or even worse, the natural mind might look at it and say it's weakness. Right? You Listen, some might look at what we do and say, that's not a plan. Prayer is not a plan. I, I beg to differ. I would tell you right quick. Prayer is a mighty powerful weapon in the kingdom of God. If you look at it from a carnal or, or, or human mind or a natural mind, which is one that's not been regenerated yet or been born again, you might look at it and say, that's ridiculous. Some might look at the cross and say, how can you be saved by the cross? Well, to those who, who look at it and are not saved, saved, they'll say it's foolish. But to us that are saved, we'll say it's power in it. Hallelujah. There's still power in the blood of the lamb. Make no mistake about it, my, my friend. Uh, we are in a warfare. It's a spiritual warfare. And we have to learn how to be effective in this military campaign. Amen. And so we're going to jump in. We have made our way to Ephesians chapter six. Uh, I'm just going to read one verse for today. And we're just going to keep moving here. Ephesians six, if you would, if you've not been with us, you want to write down a, a Ephesians chapter six, verse 11. That's where we're going to focus on for the next 20 minutes or so. Paul says, put on the whole armor of God. How much of it? Yeah, that's right. All of it. Whole means every bit of it. We're going to get to that in the weeks to come if the Lord give us strength. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles. And I want you to highlight that word wiles. We're reading out of the King James, obviously, W-I-L-E-S. Depending on what version, yours may say something like maybe schemes or maybe strategy or maybe tricks. It depends on what version you're reading. That's okay with us. But the wiles of the devil is what we're up against. And so write this down if you don't mind. Just to make sure we stay on 
on task of what the Lord wants us to do during this session is I'm going to talk to you a little bit about and declare this to you. It is not what it seems. I, I pray you've written that down. It is not what it seems. Listen, that's what Paul is really getting us to understand. We're battling the wiles of the devil. That word wiles, the Greek word is methodia. Methodia. Interesting word. Obviously, we get the, the English word method from that. But methodia, wiles. I want to give you a definition. It means organized, systematic deception. It's schemes. I'm going to say it again. Methodia, where we get the word wiles from, means organized, systematic, deception. It's schemes. We see that same word translated in a phrase. That phrase is lie in wait. Lie in wait. We see that same word. It's in Ephesians 4 and 14. I want to read that for you. I know it says lie in wait in there, but the Greek word says methodia. Ephesians 4 and 14 says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait. Highlight that. Mark it. Remember it. They lie in wait to do what? To deceive. Listen, don't you know the devil is scheming on you? my brother and my sister, make no mistake about it. He's organized and systematically he's waiting to attack your life, your children, your grandchildren, your job, any way he can lay something in your path to bring harm and eventually try to bring destruction into your life. But the question is, what does those attacks look like? How do they work? Well, what I want to start to do during this session is to lay some of the groundwork to help all of us understand that. And we'll continue to build if the Lord give us strength in the weeks to come. Listen, just because something sounds good doesn't mean it's good for you. Paul said all things are lawful. I heard you, Pastor Ron, but all things are not expedient. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it or it's good for you or it's going to turn out like you think, right? There's this thing called wind of doctrine that Paul just used that phrase. He said, wind carried about with every wind of doctrine. You want to mark that. Listen, the enemy wants to keep doctrine, listen to me, moving like the wind. I just want to, I want to, I just kind of want to take my time here and I want you to see this clearly. Wind of doctrine. Doctrine that's in the wind. That means it moves. It changes. That's a really good word to write down. It changes. It means so you really can't catch it. It's trickery. Listen to me. I'm going to help you. If you just stay with us, we're going to help you prepare yourself to war, good warfare. Right? Question. Can you see the wind? 
The obvious answer to that is no. Does it always blow from the same direction? The obvious answer to that is no. So how do we counter this wind of doctrine that comes from this direction today and tomorrow comes from this direction? It's ever changing, right? How do you counter that? It might be easier than you think. But I'll just give you the end before we get there, okay? Write this down. Here's how you counter it with something that does not change. <laughs> if you want to if you want to put uh, a stop to something that's changing, you brace up against something that's not changing. <laughs> that's solid. That doesn't move. Hallelujah, somebody. I, I mean, somebody can, can see this already. You know where this is going, right? Look, my radar goes up when someone is teaching about how maybe the elders or past generations maybe just didn't have good understanding of some things. That automatically puts me on high alert. And I'm, I want to present my case to you over the next few minutes. You know, I hear people talking about, hey, maybe the generation before us didn't have something right. They just didn't understand. And I understand there's things to learn. Hallelujah. We grow in grace and we grow in knowledge. I, I understand that. But I promise you, my life was born. I was born and shaped. God shaped me for a time like this and planted me by his grace in an ever-changing generation. Every generation changes and adjusts a little bit, but it's, it's exploding, right? Change in the way things are evolving. It's exploding. It's exponential. And listen, I need you to know, my brother and my sister, God does not change. You need to know that. Listen, some say they just didn't have the right information in previous generations. I would venture to say whoever they is that's saying that likely found the Lord via that whole system or group of people that just didn't, wasn't able to put all the verbs and necessarily the nouns together. We might not be as good with it today as we think we are, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you what they did have. They had the same word we have. I know we got different versions, but I'm telling you, it's the same God. Yes, we may have all these, these versions, and some of them are helpful, right, to, for understanding. I get it, right? But some of these versions, I liken it into eating fish you gotta it's unfortunate that you gotta know how to eat the fish and spit out the bones and i believe in my heart is why the bible says that we're to study to show ourselves approved unto god a workman that need not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth right we've got to study i don't care what version you have right you you might have one of those versions that's easy to read i like them i read them too let me tell you but I still understand one thing for sure. God doesn't change. And some of these versions are designed to begin to, to move one degree at a time away from what God established as truth. And yes, you best better believe it. My life is wired to counter those things. Everything in my DNA, my radar is going to go up the minute I start hearing some foolishness like that. Right? And so I will spend my life as we preach the everlasting gospel to declare that God said, he said, I change not. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's going, he doesn't change. And we need to know that. So my job is to try to unmask some of these tricks, these wiles that the enemy uses. So let's take a look at Proverbs 23 and 10. I don't know how much farther we're going to get. 
Uh, we'll we'll go another fifteen minutes or so, and and we'll we'll come back next week if God gives us grace to do it. Proverbs twenty three and ten. I'll just read the first portion of it. Some of these old schooler Bible studiers have been around churches a long time. will recognize this right, right away. Proverbs twenty three and ten says simply: Remove not the old landmark. Listen, you're just gonna have to think about that for a while. Listen, that, that, that is Solomon talking to his son and saying, son, there were some things that were established in, in the previous generations. You'd be best not to mess with it. Son, if, when you do, when you start messing with it, you're going to set some things in motion. And you might, son, not know, totally know the impact of what you're doing. So Solomon told his son, those old landmarks, some of those boundaries that have been laid there, don't mess with them, son. Don't mess with them. Listen, that, that is good wisdom for you and for me, my brothers and my sisters. I, I, we, we just started this journey. Don't worry. I'm telling you, I pray you'll stay with us and you'll consider the word of God. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, please. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 3 and 4. Hear this. Paul, again, tells a young pastor. He says, under the inspiration, by the way, of the Holy Spirit, because all scripture is given by inspiration of God, by the way. So 2 Timothy 4 and 3 says, for the time will come. It's not an option. You don't have to guess. You and I, we should definitely know this. Paul told Timothy the time will come when they, whoever the they is, will not endure sound doctrine. Sound, sound means without defect. <laughs> Think about that. They will not endure sound doctrine, doctrine that's pure, that doesn't have defects in it. Paul told Timothy, listen, son, and I'm not in any hurry, church. I want to take my time here. Paul said, Timothy, there will be a day when the church world, quote, unquote, I'm not talking about the church. I'm talking about the religious world here, by the way won't endure doctrine that doesn't have defects. But after their own lust, that means they're going to want, the lust means desire. It's they're going to want something different than doctrine that doesn't have defects. Well, what's different than doctrine that doesn't have defects? You're exactly right. Is doctrine that does have defects. Listen, church, I want you to listen to listen to the old preacher here. It is a surety according to God's word, which does not lie, that within the framework of the religious realm, religious people are going to desire. These are folks go to church every every week. Every week maybe two or three times a week. And Paul says, Timothy, the tide's going to change. They're going to desire things that would not be classified by God as being the without a defect. And he says they shall heap. Heap is a measure. It's not a little. A, a heap means it's a bunch. Hard to measure a heap, <laughs> but it's more than a little. He said they shall heap to themselves what? Teachers. That's why we know we're talking about doctrine, because doctrine is simply something that's taught. So what are they going to do? Paul said, Timothy, they're going to go out and find these preachers and folks that are teaching God's word and God's people because they have itching ears. They've got some itch 
that they need somebody to scratch. Now, I want to be vividly clear. And I want all ministry and preachers, if you would, consider this. Our assignment is not to scratch somebody's ear. I know that you might be thinking, preacher, pastor, bishop, whatever your assignment is. I know you might be thinking that i got to make some adjustments so I don't run people off. Because i got to grow. Listen, I want you to understand this. You have to study. Jesus said that he didn't come to bring peace. He came to bring a sword. And in what he brings, it will sometimes have a father going against a son. Sometimes a husband will and a wife will be standing against each other. Sometimes children are not going to see eye to eye. I know that it might not sound right to you. And, and he is the Prince of Peace. And we have the ministry of reconciliation. Our job is to bring people together. Our job is to try to bring peace. But we must do that with truth. And we do not compromise truth for peace. Do you hear what I'm saying? This ministry here, AAA Ministries, is built on the, the premise to try to make peace to try to present the gospel to all kinds of people, but be well assured in doing that, we do not have the assignment to compromise sound doctrine just for the spirit of getting along. Listen, I love you. I pray to God that some, somehow the Holy Spirit will work in your life to bring peace and reconcile you to God and you to others. And I'm the same for my life. But let me tell you something. If me not preaching the truth is what it's going to take, I'm going to tell you, it'll be a cold day in Hades before this preacher right here cease to preach what thus saith the Lord. I don't care who says that that's not the way to do it. The Lord called me to preach a life change in everlasting gospel. And sometimes that means I'm going to have to say some things that might rub you the wrong way. I don't intend for it to do that. My intention is to try to, as much as I can, season it with salt. I know that's what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to take words and put salt on them. Because the Bible says do it that way. But salt doesn't mean I'm to change what I'm supposed to say. I may very well change the way I deliver it. Praise be to God. That, I can do that. Because the Bible says the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. So, yes, I can alter my approach and my delivery and, and make sure I got salt on it. But at the end of the day, I'm going to tell you right now, the Bible is very clear. There's certain things not going to enter the kingdom of God. No whoremonger, unclean person has any inheritance in the kingdom of God. And all the devils in hell are not going to make me not preach that word. Because if I don't do it, somebody's going to think it's okay. It's not okay, my brothers and sisters. We've been called to come out from among them and be separate and touch not the unclean thing. Hallelujah. So we can absolutely preach grace, which that's the only access to God. It's grace through the Lord Jesus, the work he did. You'll never be good enough, and I'll never be good enough to get access to God. Uh, and, except the, the, the Lord draw us and make a way. We're not going to have how good is good enough. When will I know I'm doing enough good if, if I have to be good to make it? Listen, my salvation and your salvation had nothing to do with how good you are, how good I am. It's all based on how good he is. Hallelujah. We're saved by grace through faith. It's a gift. Hallelujah. We got that record crystal clear. But after that, what are we going to do? 
I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. We're going to have to bring glory to God. We're going to have to live not to be saved, but we live and do what's right to bring honor to our Father. We are work in progress, no doubt about it. The Lord's working on us. But guess what? Paul says, I don't feel like I've apprehended. He wasn't talking about salvation, by the way. He said, I don't feel like I apprehended. But he said, this is one thing I do. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. If you don't know this calling is a high one, somebody has given you the wrong doctrine. You've been called to come out from among them and be separate and touch not the unclean thing. And if nobody's told you that, I apologize for somebody giving you false doctrine. But you've got to walk upright. Amen. And live. And ask the Lord, we are work in progress. And if we sin, we've got uh, an advocate, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Listen, we don't have to stay in that. We can say, Lord, I sin. And, you, and I'm telling you, it could happen to any of us. I don't care how long you've been saved. Right? But if you sin, don't live in it. Come out of it. Ask the Lord to forgive you. Ask him to help you and move on. It don't take but a second. If there's something you need to fix, go fix it. If there's somebody you need to forgive, forgive them. If there's somebody you need to apologize to, get to apologizing. But we've got to be about our father's business. And the, the, the devil is having, making merchandise of us. He's having a heyday on some corrupt gospel, some corrupt doctrine. We're to pre preach sound doctrine. Listen, this is very important, church, because we're, I believe we're in it now. And I believe that as, as Paul is telling Timothy, this thing's not getting better. As, as we continue forward, we will continue to have uh, religious, religious groups that have certain appetites and desires to be taught certain things. Listen, you pray for this preacher right here. I, I want to say something to my preacher brothers and sisters and, and, and the pastors that are out there and leaders. Don't compromise the gospel for numbers. Uh, Do you hear what I said? Whether you got one or you got a thousand. Now, listen, I'm a firm believer that the church is to multiply, not maintain. I'm grateful for that. We, you know, I, I attend Midway. And I, I love, that is the mission. I'm telling you, and really, when a church is not multiplying, then you should stop and say, it's time to do some assessment to try to understand why we're not multiplying because disciples are to make disciples that are to make disciples. We're not supposed to maintain. And in fact, in many cases, if you are maintaining, there is some defect that needs to be examined and corrected. Because if you look at the record, when Jesus, when it was noised abroad that Jesus was in the house, people, you couldn't hardly get to the front door for people trying to press. Why? Because when Jesus, be, when the Bible says, he says this, and I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. Listen, you can't lift up the Lord Jesus and he's going to heal somebody. I'm just saying, right? He's going to save somebody. He's going to he's going to set captives free. He's going to unstop deaf ears. He's going to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That's what he's going to do. That's going to be the message. And the Bible says when that message started being preached that the violent took it by force. I don't even have time to get into that particular passage tonight. But it means that if, if the Lord is, if, if that message is that whosoever will, let him come. I don't care who you are. I don't care, care where you've been. I don't care what you've done. The Lord, he's got power to save you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I don't care whether you're Jew, Gentile, Greek, bond, free, doesn't matter. Male, female, God will take you right now and save you and plant you in his family and adopt you as a son or a daughter. Whosoever will, let him come. The Bible says clearly, if that message is being declared, you won't be able to stop them. 
They'll tear your church door down trying to get in. So what's keeping them from doing that? Well, I understand we've got an adversary. I'm not really worried that much about that. I'm more concerned about the doctrine. I already know there's going to be itching ears in the house. I already know there's certain desires that folks want to hear. They want, they, there's some messages they want you to preach and there's some messages they don't want you to preach. Uh, in, in the most loving Christian way I can, let it be clear that the people do not call ministry. God calls ministry. I understand. Certainly there are committees that call pastors and, and, and there are certain pastors and, and leaders that make assignments and, and I get all those things. But up past all of that, if the sovereign hand of God and make no mistake about it, he's large and in charge. I, you might think you're in charge and you might think you're running a certain house, but I got news for you. Really, whatever it is you're doing, there's a God somewhere. And I, I promise you, uh, that thing's going to go the way he uh, orchestrated it to go. And when that thing is said and done, even those things that Satan meant for evil, God will make it good. Hallelujah. All oh, praise be to God. This, uh, this is not even in my notes. I'm just telling you, the, the Holy Spirit is moving on my heart right now. And I'm, I'm trying to tell you something that, that you'd be well advised to hear. 2 Timothy 4 and 4 says, they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned under fables. My question is to ministries, are you helping them turn to the truth or helping them turn away from it? That's you and the Lord to kind of sort through. My job is to tell you that's where we are and that's where we're headed. Right? If we know this, we've got to be looking for it to church. I see it all over the church world today. What do you see? I'm going to continue to make my case and I'm going to plant this seed. We'll pick back up here next week because we're about to wrap this up. But I want to plant this seed because I've only started on this subject matter. It's not what it seems. So St. John chapter 8, verse number 43 and 44. St. John chapter 8, Verse 43 and 44, you really, it's important to learn these verses and really this chapter. But Jesus says in John 8 and 44, which is what I'll focus on here just for the sake of time. Jesus said, you are of your father, the devil. But that wouldn't, that wouldn't have gone over well today in church, in somebody's church, would it? <laughs> Jesus said, you are of your father, the devil, and the love in him, and abode not in the truth, because there's no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Listen, to, father, to be a father of something, that means you have children can't be a father if you don't have children. And he says the devil is the father of a lie. Listen to me, church. Write this down. I want you to write down one word, which we'll continue to build on next week and thereafter. The word that we've been kind of chipping around all, all during this session is the word deception. Oh, that's what it is. It's defined as the intentional misleading or beguiling of another to gain an advantage or to hurt. I want to read that again. Deception, the intentional misleading or beguiling of another to gain an advantage or to inflict hurt. 
2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3 will be our last one for this session. Paul says, but I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that's in Christ. Listen, subtle means crafty. Subtle is almost, the image I have in my mind is almost like a frog. I don't know if you ever heard the story of a frog that you put a frog in a pan of water and don't take this literally, okay? I don't wanna get a lot of letters and emails about doing harm to frogs, but it's just for teaching purposes. But if you put a frog in a pan of room temperature water, he'll just sit there. And if you put it on the stove and turn it up, he'll just sit there. All the while that water is getting warmer and warmer and warmer. And by the time the frog realizes he's in the wrong environment, he's toast. It's done, it's done damage to him. Maybe damage he can't recover from. Corrupt means change. Something's changed from its original use or meaning. Listen, God intended it for one purpose and the devil will try to work that for another purpose. That is spiritual warfare at its best. Well, we'll get to Eve. Right? That's, that's really when Paul presented that to the church at Corinth in 2 Corinthians 11 and 3. Paul went back and grabbed Sister Eve and said, let me show you, church, how this works. That the serpent will wrap around your mind and he just keeps on constricting and he keeps on corrupting until it's not so simple anymore. And listen, we'll pick up next week on this idea of complex versus simple. Listen, I get real concerned when ministries try to get too deep with it and too complex to where people can't even understand what the Lord is saying. Oh, you don't want to miss that next week. I promise you, you don't want to miss that. I want to help you with it. Listen, our responsibility is to make sure that we don't drift away from the message of Christ. Listen, it's about him. Contrary to popular opinion, it's got nothing to do with pastor so-and-so or bishop so-and-so. It's all about Jesus. He is the hope of the world. He's the prince of peace. Hallelujah. He's the one. He's the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. We have to get smaller and he has got to get bigger. Hallelujah. Because there is salvation in no other name other than at the name of Jesus. Every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of, of God. Hallelujah, somebody. It's all about Jesus. And so listen, if you don't know him, as your Lord and Savior, I've come to tell you, you might be confused with all this church stuff, with all this denomination stuff, with all this church dogma and, and all these things that churches build and, and, and try to keep building. Listen, I've come to tell you this. God sent his son into the world to save sinners through his blood of the everlasting covenant. Hallelujah. That he gave his life. He didn't sin, but he took our sin because the wage of sin is death. It has to be paid for. And the only payment the Bible gives us is death. But I got good news for you. It, that death is already been paid for on Calvary. Jesus became sin for us and therefore took the payment of it and nailed it to the cross and it's finished. Hallelujah. He paid it in full. And all we have to do is believe that he's God's son and that God raised him from the dead for our sin. 
If you believe that, the Bible says you are saved. All I want to know is anybody believe that. Listen, if you've never given your heart to the Lord and you say, I don't know what's going to happen to me if I die. Listen, all you have to do is believe on Jesus. If you believe that message of the of the life, the death and the resurrection and of Jesus and he's God's son, the Bible says you are saved. So if you want to be saved today, just believe that. And if you believe that that's you, you need to tell somebody. You need to find your local church that's preaching Jesus. You need to go sit down, talk to the pastor there, ministers there, some family member that you that you know is is a living uh, is uh, the Christian life and that that really believes on Jesus. I got to put it that way. If they believe that Jesus is God's son, you ought to sit down and have a conversation with them and let them tell you what you do next. But for salvation, you've done it. That's believe on Jesus because he did it. We've got that right. Why don't you come? Listen, if you're saved and you're just set back, all this church stuff is just giving you a headache. Maybe you're frustrated with church life and, and you've said in your, to yourself, I'm not ever going back again. Let me tell you something. Churches are filled with people. And when you have people, you're going to have trouble because we're all wrestling with something. We're all a work in progress. Listen, don't be too hard because we're just people. We're God's people. We're saved people, but God's still working in us, perfecting us day by day to be more like his son, Jesus. Why don't you just jump in there and let him work on you too? It's important, but don't blame God for something that church folks do. Amen, somebody. We don't go to church for people. We go because God asked us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. That's why we do. We, we've gone because we go because we're there to serve and to try to make an impact and to try to do something that will help others along this journey. Listen, will that be you? You need to find you someplace. This ministry is not designed for people to join. Absolutely not. This ministry is designed to help, to walk alongside ministries and to be a, not to fight them. And to hurt them, but to help them, because that's part of God's will and part of God's way is that we might assemble ourselves together and we might uh, grow together, be baptized and, and help each other and help each other's children and, and help the community. We, we should be about our father's business. I asked you to do that. And if you need prayer, we're more than, than honored to pray with you. Reach out, send us a prayer request. We don't always make those things public because they're not always appropriate. But we pray. Let me tell you, we take that very serious. Of course, you can pray for yourself. This is not telling you God ear is attentive to the prayers of his people. You ought to pray and ask God about it. But we are more than happy to do it because the Bible says that where there are two or three gathered together in my name, I'll be there and I'll be one in the midst of them. So we ought to covet together and pray together. Uh, we're glad to do that. This ministry, we are honored to do that. So we will humbly walk alongside with you and trust God with you. And the Lord will do marvelous things in your life. Listen, you haven't seen even an inkling of what God's about to do in your life. Just stay with the Lord. Listen, there, there, there are some that tell you that every day is going to be Sunday. It's not. There are some tough days along this journey. I'm telling you, you've got an adversary. There are some tough days. There will be some days you're going to wake up and, and you're going to say, wow, it, it, this is hurting me. It goes with the territory. Because when, when you're in a, in a battle, when you're off to war, it's not always pleasant. Sometimes it's challenging. And sometimes the, the fight breaks out. But we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, somebody. We're above only and not beneath. We're the head and not the tail. Praise God. 
We're blessed when we go in. We're blessed when we go out. We're blessed in the city and we're blessed in the field. Oh, make no mistake about it. We are blessed people. But that's because of the Lord who is with us. So I say to you, we love you here at AAA Ministries. God loves you best. Stay with the Lord. If the Lord gives us strength, we'll pick up right here next week. We'll jump right in and we'll, we're we going to talk about Sister Eve and, and try to understand that it's not what it seems. It's deception. So may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you is our prayer. Amen. Amen. We love you. See you next week.